what's going on. Um, I have decided to go ahead and kind of continue the topography tutorial, um, except this is going to be a more intermediate um, tutorial. Uh, I felt like I was leaving some of y'all hanging by just using, you know, putting out a basic, just a very basic tutorial. So, for those who are looking to already move forward after viewing that first tutorial on, you know, the different types of text and how to use them and all that, um, you can do this. Or if you're just looking for a cool way to make your text really pop, then, you know, you're in the right place. Here we go. Um, so basically what you're looking at, this is what we are going to be making or something similar to this. And I think it's pretty cool and I hope you all will like it. So let's get right into this. We're just going to go, you know, a uh, new document here. We're going to go ahead and make this, um, I don't know, 12. I can't remember the size of the other one, um, but I know how I did it. So let's make this 1920 by... 1200 and I have it at 100 resolution because I don't feel like doing it at 300 and making the video stall for too long on y'all. Anyways, we're just going to go to image size and hit that at 1200. There we go. Keeps the aspect where I want it to be at. Um, by the way, I am in Photoshop CS4 and so follow along. If you're in CS3, I'm pretty sure you can do the same exact thing or any previous ones. So let's go ahead and get started. What we're going to do first is we're going to take our type tool. I'm going to go through this pretty quickly. So if you need to pause the video, go ahead and do it. It's not going to hurt my feelings. And we're just going to type in crayon. Okay. Yeah. Right, let's just go ahead and transform this, make it bigger. There we go, take up pretty much the whole screen, that's perfectly fine. And what we're going to do, we're going to hit enter to confirm that. And next we're going to hit the next um, new layer. And the way I'm going to add this texture to this, instead of going in um, to the effects palette or whatever, I'm going to go ahead and take this picture that I found, which is a scratched metal texture. So I'm going to hit command control A, depending if you're on a Mac or a PC. And then Command and Control C to copy it. Go back into this file. Um, by the way, yeah. And then I'm just going to go ahead and Command and Control V to paste it. So now what we're going to go ahead and do is to put this texture on the text and have that overlap it and you know look all fancy and everything. Hit Command and Control on the little icon next to crayon. And then with Layer One selected, hit this button down here, which is going to is the mask button. Then we'll go down back to crayon, add a stroke. Let's go ahead and just make this, uh, it's kind of this teal looking color. It's a pretty cool color. Keep it at, you know, three pixels is fine. And, you know, keep that. Now the next thing we're gonna go ahead and do is add our highlights and shadows. So hit a new layer, and we're gonna, you know, command or control, click on that text again to get that selection. Grab your gradient tool, make sure you have black selected, go up, and a good portion, get a good portion size up there. We create another new layer, um, and we're just gonna deselect that and grab the rectangle marquee tool, drag it across, and let's go ahead and get a white gradient here. Make sure that's uh, white to transparent, and make that a little bit brighter. That should look, that'll be okay. And we're gonna go ahead and deselect that, and then. To make sure that's just you know masked, kind of control click on our text, make sure that's selected, add another mask. There we go. Now you know we're starting to add our lighting effects, everything's looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and darken up our background just so we can see what's going on. So I'm just gonna get black paint bucket tool, darken that up, and I'm taking my caps lock key off because that's kind of annoying me. Um, next thing, select your crayon. This is kind of a cool way to get your text to look 3D um, in Photoshop, you know, because in Photoshop CS4, there is no 3D text. That comes out in CS5. So CS4, you got to kind of trick the eye. Um, so we're going to go ahead and have this layer selected. Uh, Command J or Control J. Bring this down and it's a neat little trick. So with this selected, I'm going to have my selection tool. I'm going to push to the left once and to the right once. Okay? So that's um, that'll move to the left and to the and downward one pixel. 
And I'll do that for about four layers. Not sure if that did it quite how I wanted to. And then, you know, just keep doing that. That's that's fine. Make sure, you know, the the following layer copy, you know, goes in the right, goes below the next one. I can't remember the hot key for placing it below the layer you have selected. So if anyone wants to comment on that, uh, go ahead and do so, because I would really like to know that. Okay, anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and um, shift click and make sure I got all of these ones selected. Not the top one, because I don't want to mess with that one right now. But these, I'm going to go ahead and right click it, rasterize type, and then I'm going to go to merge layers. Okay, And with that merge, I'm going to go to image adjustments, use saturation, and just change the colors here. I'm going to go ahead and colorize it, boost up my saturation a little bit, and I want it to be an orange, that's what I had it on the last one. Um, kind of getting some weird color. I don't know why. Hmm. Okay, so, uh, I think I know what happened here. Uh, we'll just go back to adjustments, use saturation, and probably just turn the lightness up. Well, let's colorize it for one. Turn lightness up a little bit, saturation, there we go. And I want a nice, nice looking orange. Um, that's pretty good. Let's clean the saturation a little more, maybe a little bit. There we go, that's a good orange. So, there we go. Uh, we've got a nice little color there. And with the background, I'm going to go ahead and make a new layer. Uh, by the way, I'm going to change the background color to kind of a dark blue. And probably right here would be good. And let's go ahead and do that real quick. And then maybe a little too bright, I think. Let's go a little darker there. There we go. That's a good color. And on this one right here, we're going to go ahead and just get our gradient tool. And not with that color selected. Um, I want to go ahead and make this black. And just bring that up. Really add some depth to this. Maybe change that background up a little bit. That color. I'm not really liking that. Well, yeah, I'm not really liking that dark blue with this. Um, so let's go ahead and just make it kind of a more teal. Not really teal, but more aquish color. There we go. That's not too bad. I kind of like that. But add a little more black. Of course, this isn't even the main part of the tutorial. But anyways, there we go. We got that. And then we will finish this off by adding a lens flare, um, which I'm going to teach y'all. If you're kind of new to Photoshop, you might not know about this because a lot of people will think... Um, First of all, I gotta fill this with color. So we'll fill it with black. But anyways, if you're new to Photoshop and you've used lens flares before, you're probably not using them in a way that's very effective. Um, I'm not bringing you down or anything. But the way you wanna do it is you wanna put it on a new layer, paint that layer black. Um, you can do it white, but black tends to work a lot better because it is, yeah. Anyways, just make it black just to, you know, elude any problems. So black, add the lens flare, and then we will go ahead and change that to lighten on the blend mode. So there you have the lens flare on its own layer and then you can move it around and all that, you know. And we're going to go image, adjustments, and we'll just change the color of it to kind of match our design here. And I want a blue looking color, just kind of scroll through this see blue, you know, there's kind of a good, well, that's all. Make sure you hit colorize first to make it actually look good. And we'll go to a blue. That's that's good there. And you know that's basically it. Um, that's the way to get your text to look 3D with a good texture and all that. Of course, the colors on this one are kind of off, but you know, play around with it, make some match your colors, um, and you'll come up with something good. Hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. And comment, subscribe, and look forward to some more videos. Thank you.